Look at this. He ate the friggin' shelf. Just blame me for everything. Your dog, your responsibility. My name is Laura. I live here with my 15-year-old son, Zach. My husband, Greg. I'm a mixed martial artist. I've taught for the last 15 years. I've trained hundreds of people to the level of black belt. Scooby! We got Scooby when he was about 15 weeks old from a kill shelter. We're so good puppy. We were instantly in love, the entire family. Sweet, you goodness. Scooby is a sweetheart of a dog when people are home. He really just goes nuts when we're not here. He jumps through the windows and he smashes through them. He had gotten something like 26 stitches across his head. You walk in the house after something like that, and it's like a grenade went off. We thought the bars would actually keep him from going through. The dog broke the window through the child safety bars. I feel like I'm living in a prison. All this is his. He just grabbed whatever he could and shook it into oblivion. Because of Scooby's episodes, living in this house is like living in a crack den. This is the last straw. If Victoria can't help us, then I'm, I'm gone. Look at you, you are magnificent. As soon as I walk into the house, I meet this beautiful dog. Hi, Laura, nice, nice to, meet to meet you. you. Zach. Hey, nice to meet you, Zach. Yeah, I'm Greg, nice Good to, to meet, meet you. you. Why, why did you call me here? The biggest problem we have with him is when he's home by himself, he will tear the house to pieces, trying to get out to other dogs that are passing on the street. So this is him? Yep. This is him, the broken window. You can see where. <gasps> yep, watch your fingers. Oh, I won't do it, you do it. Yeah, what do you want to do? We're gonna pull no, it down. Look yeah, at that's this. all him. He went right through the window. Well, he right. actually went right through the window seven or eight times, but seven or eight. Time. Wait a second, seven or eight times yep. he went through the window. Scooby's a big dog, so he inflicts big, big damage. And this is a dog that has literally destroyed the house. He went through the window. Is that yeah, how he got his scar? That's how he got this. And that was about 24 stitches, and this was <gasps> another 20 stitches over here. Oh my goodness. For a dog to injure himself so much and continue to do it, there is a desperation in this dog that goes far beyond normal. This is his favorite one doing here. This is his, oh my. I've never seen anything like this ever. So, oh my gosh. So you put this gate up here to stop him from going upstairs, obviously. Yeah, it's a whole different story going out a de second story window than the first story. Well, I'm glad you've got this gate up here then. Good. Right. <laughs> this is thousands and thousands of dollars worth of damage here. Don't tell me. Tell my wife. I think it's close to $15,000. There was tension between Greg and Laura. Scooby's behavior. It's literally destroying a relationship. Unbelievable. All right, any other damage? We can show you the garage. What happened door. in the garage? Well, after he did all this damage and got all the stitches, we had to kind of contain him because we have to go to work every day. And so we put him downstairs in the garage in a large uh, One large dog crate. crate. Oh, a crate yeah. for a dog like this? Yeah. He not only managed to get out of the crate through a hole about this large, but also after destroying a lot of the garage and chewing through wood shelving and everything else, chewed a hole in the garage door. Big enough for him to get out. Oh, yeah. My. He likes his freedom. He really does. Can I see the damage in the garage? Sure, sure absolutely. absolutely. Like this, this here? Yep, yep. Okay. right out that way. As you can see, this is the garage door that he ate a hole through. Yes, yes, yes. Wow. <gasps> oh my God. When I went into the garage, I feel like I went into a crime scene. This is, this is panic. Mm -hmm. This is blind panic. Not just like, oh, I'm, I'm just gonna chew today. This is panic attack, mm -hmm. big time. It was very surprising that Victoria explained to us Scooby has panic attacks. We didn't really realize that that's what actually was happening. What have you done in the, what, six years that this has been okay. going on? We've tried citronella collars. Didn't work. No. Yeah, don't say. No. 
Also tried the shock collars, which was a horrible experience. Yeah. Seriously. Seriously. Your dog is anxious, stressed out, and you put a shock collar on him. We didn't realize that it was stress. We just thought it was a behavioral issue. So everything you're doing with the citronella collars and the shock collars and the telling them off and everything, you, um, you have made it worse. So we've got to find a way to go, you know what, buddy, I understand you. I get it. I'm not happy that our attempts to help Scooby have hurt him or made the situation worse. But Laura, it's your dog, it's your job. Get it squared away. Have you ever used a video camera or anything to actually film what he does when you're not here? I can hear him. I don't even have to see what's going on in here. I can hear him. There was no doubt in my mind. When everyone left, Scooby started to get riled up. I have no doubt in my mind that if that board wasn't up or those bars went up, he would be through that window in a second. Just got upstairs. Okay, well, hold on one second. I don't want him jumping out the window upstairs. Come on, baby, come down here. Just got through the gate up here. How did he get? Come on, sweetheart. Oh, God, come on. Good boy. He's just torn the blinds down from outstairs. Good boy. I almost had a heart attack when I saw Scooby at the second floor window. He'd got the blinds down and he was trying to get out. Oh, God. Destruction in here. Scooby's anxiety on separation is one of the worst cases I've ever seen. Can you take yourselves off into the front room and just hang there? I just want to see what oh, he does. Oh, absolutely, sure. OK. As I thought. OK. Is that OK? Yeah, yeah. Go out again, do exactly the same thing. Sure. I want to see what he does again. OK, very interesting. This is a dog that does not want to be left alone, even when he's in the home. I want to desensitize him to any departure triggers. Picking up your keys, putting on your coat. As the dog watches your cues, the anxiety slowly builds. So instead of just picking up the keys and going, pick the keys up and you put them down again. Pick them up, put them down, pick it up, put them, put them down. And then you walk back into the room. And he's looking at you going, have you gone crazy? I'm gonna be watching outside mm -hmm. your progress and go for it. I think that Greg has tremendous loyalty to myself and to our family. While I'm not so sure that he's keen on helping with the dog, I think he will help. Hi, puppy. He's looking a bit confused as if to say, what are they doing? Come on, come lay down. Come on, come on. It's not the most entertaining thing to do, to walk around the house for a half an hour. So I'll see you at the game. Drop your keys, pick up your bag, drop your bag, sit down, comfort the dog. It could be a little boring. I can see he's also lip licking. Lip licking is a real sign of stress. I didn't want the confusion to cause stress. I wanted him to relax with it, and he did. Take care. Call me during the day. OK, very good. Bye. Great. He is thoroughly confused. That's what I want. He's confused, but then he goes, huh. The next component of the training is going to be leaving. Scooby really wasn't that bothered, Greg going in and out. That's exactly what I wanted Scooby to do. Greg got the hang of it, so I sent him away because the real test is going to be with Laura. Back in again. When Laura started to do the training, Scooby did really well. Graduated departures, starting from one second and building it up, is what we have to concentrate on now. Start off very, very quick and build it up slowly. It's fascinating to actually see him. Till it got to about 15 seconds. That was too long for him. We'll go back when he's whining. It was certainly a little worrisome that I wasn't able to leave Scooby for as long as we were hoping. We have to wait till he stops whining. Right, get in now. 
He is such a needy dog. I come bearing gifts. Excellent. Yes, Scooby, this is all for you. Talk about a spoiled dog. Dogs lead very boring lives in our homes, yet they still retain the amazing senses that they used to have to survive in the wild. So allow them to use those senses by giving them activity toys in the home so they can work out how to get their food rather than just having it in a boring old bowl. This one Good is great. Lots of dogs love these because you stuff it either end. Yum, yum, yum and they have to eat to get it out. There you go. Oh, what a good boy. I want you to get up and walk out the room. I want to see what he does. Does he follow you or does he chew? OK, we'll find out. Let's see. What I love about this is that he heard her going because his ears went back. So he knows that he's out, she's out the room. But he's choosing to stay here with his bone. I wanted to bring everything together now. This is the final part of the training. I've put a temporary blackout on your windows because I don't want him seeing anything outside. You are not going to have to live like this forever. There are gr other great solutions that you can use that are that look nice, but I just want to see how it works. This is probably going to be one of the hardest things that we've ever had to do together as a team. I'm not really even sure what the future may hold, but we're about to find out. Laura, you're going to be in the home by yourself. I want you to do a few departure cues. Then I want you to go and get a favorite toy that I have pre-stuffed with delicious food. Wait a couple of minutes, hang out with him. Just get up and leave. Let's go. If this doesn't work and the training doesn't work and we're four months down the road and we're in a, sim a similar boat as we are now, then we'll really be faced with some very hard decisions and I hope we don't get there. I wanted the crew to come out, film remotely so that we could get a really true picture of behavior. Good. She's doing the departure triggers. I was watching the monitor with my heart in my mouth. My stomach was leaping because I so wanted this to work. Nice. This is really good, Laura. I want you to leave. The goal is for Scooby to reach two minutes being by himself because that's the time when he's likely to be the most anxious. Now this, this is it. This is, what is he going to do? Is he going to leave that toy? He doesn't even know I'm gone. Mm -mm. I want to get past the two minute mark because that's when he started to freak. I am truthfully worried that it won't work and that there won't be a positive outcome. This is the longest two minutes of my life. <laughs> It's a little unsettling to try and take 10 seconds and turn it into two minutes quickly. Great, we're at two minutes, we're at two minutes. Two minutes later, he was very, very focused on the toys. It was a huge relief because that's what you picture your dog doing when you're not home. It, it was amazing. It was just absolutely an amazing transformation. Great, I think now we don't want to push it. Go back in, Laura. Hallelujah, we got to three minutes, and Scooby was relaxed. Three minutes might not seem a lot, but for this dog, it was huge. I would label that as a real success. All right, we really need to get going. Um, you want to take care of giving him his treat? Yeah, I'll get it squared away. OK, great. And my keys, sort of wait for him to have his treat. It's definitely been hard not leaving the dog in the house. We've been doing the best that we can to keep him with us or keep someone home with him as often as possible. The few times that we've left Scooby has had a very happy return. We've had no damage at all whatsoever to the house since we've left.